our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of forever. In Christ Jesus our Lord. I have sinned, forgive me. Let us pray. Stand up for prayer. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. Let us give thanks to the beneficent and merciful God, the Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, for he has covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us to yourself, spared us, supported us, and has brought us to this hour. Let us also ask him, the Lord our God, the Pantocrator, to guard us in all peace this holy day and all the days of our life. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. O Master, Lord God, the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you for everything concerning everything and in everything, for you have covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us yourself, spared us, supported us, and have brought us to this hour. Pray that God may mercy and compassion on us. Hear us, help us, and accept the supplications and prayers of his saints. For that which is good on our behalf at all times, and to keep the life and standing of our honored father, the archpriest, Pope Avatwandros the Second, and his partner in the liturgy, our father, the Bishop of Yusuf, and forgive us our sins. Lord have mercy. Therefore we ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind, grant us to complete this holy day and all the days of our life in all peace with your fear, all envy, all temptation, all the work of Satan, the counsel of wicked men, and the rising up of enemies hidden and manifest, take them away from us and from all your people and from this church and from this your holy place. But those things which are good and profitable do provide for us, for it is you have given us the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and upon all the power of the enemy. Lord of mercy, we worship the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Holy and Coessential Trinity. Hail to the Church, the House of the the angels hail to the virgin who gave birth to our Savior. Hail to you, O Mary, the affair dove who has born to us God the Logos. Hail to you, O Mary, with a holy hail. Hail to you, O Mary, the mother of the to Michael, the great archangel, hail to Gabriel, the chosen announcer. Hail to the cherubim, hail to the seraphim, hail to all the heavenly orders. Hail to my lords and fathers, the he, uh, apostles, hail to the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hail to you, O martyr. Hail to the evangelist. Hail to the apostle Saint Mark, the beholder of God. Hail to 
Son of God, uh, to give the life of our patriarch, Pope Abba, to others, the Archpriest, confirmed, and his partner in the liturgy, our holy and righteous. As father of a Yusuf, the bishop, confirm him on his throne. That we may praise you with your good, good father and the Holy Spirit, for you have come and saved us. Have mercy on us. Let us pray. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Again, let us ask God the Pontal Cross for the Father of our lord god and savior jesus christ we ask and entreat your goodness o lover of mankind remember o lord the souls of your servants who have fallen asleep our fathers and our brethren pray for our fathers and brethren who have fallen asleep and repose in the faith of christ since the beginning our holy fathers, the archbishops, our fathers, the bishops, our fathers, the hegemons, our fathers, the priests, our brethren, the deacons, our fathers, the monks, and our fathers, the laymen, and for the full repose of Christians, that Christ our God may repose all their souls in the paradise of joy. And we to accord mercy unto us and forgive us our sins. Lord, have mercy. Graciously, O Lord, repose all their souls in the bosom of our holy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Sustain them in a green pasture beside still waters in the paradise of joy, the place out of which grief, sorrow, and groaning have fled away in the light of your sins. Raise up their bodies also on the day which you have appointed according to your true promises, which are without lie. Grant them the good things of your promises, that which an eye has not seen nor ear heard, neither have come upon the heart of man. The things which you, O God, have prepared for those who love your holy name. For there is no death for your servants but a departure. Even if any negligence or heedlessness has overtaken them as men, since they were clothed in flesh and dwelt in this world, O God, as the good one and lover of mankind, graciously accord, O Lord, to repose and forgive them your servants, the Orthodox Christians, who are in the whole world, from the east to the west and from the north to the south, each one according to his name and each one according to her name. For no one is pure and without blemish, even though his life on earth be a single day. As for those, O Lord, whose souls you have taken, repose them, and may they be worthy of the kingdom of the heavens. As for us all, grant us our Christian perfection that would be pleasing to you and give them and us a share and inheritance with all your sins. Lord have mercy. Graciously accord, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our fathers, and exceedingly blessed and glorified be your name forever. Amen. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us according to our hope in you. For the eyes of everyone wait upon you, for you give them their food in due season. Hear us, O God, our Savior, the hope of all the regions of the earth. 
And you, O Lord, keep us safe from this generation and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Blessed are you, O Lord, make me to understand your commandments. Blessed are you, O Lord, enlighten me with your righteousness. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Despise not, O Lord, the works of your hands. You have been my refuge from generation to generation. I asked the Lord and said, Have mercy on me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. Lord, I have fled unto you. Save me and teach me to do your will. For you are my God, and with you is the fountain of life. In your light shall we see light. Let your mercy come unto those who know you, and your righteousness unto the upright in heart. To you belongs blessing, to you belongs praise, to you belongs glory. O Father, Son, Holy Spirit, existing from the beginning, now and forever and ever. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and sing praises unto your name, O Most High, to show forth your mercy every morning and your righteousness every night. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, who was born of the Virgin, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, who was crucified for us, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, who rose from the dead and ascended to the heavens, have mercy upon us. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of the ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, forgive us our sins. O Lord, forgive us our iniquities. O Lord, forgive us our trespasses. O Lord, visit the sick of your people. Heal them for the sake of your holy name. Our fathers and brethren who have fallen asleep, O Lord, repose their souls. While you are without sin, Lord, have mercy on us. While you are without sin, Lord, help us and receive our supplications. For yours is the glory, the dominion, and triple holiness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, bless us. Amen. O Lord, make words to pray thankfully, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We ask you, O saint full of glory, the ever-virgin, the Otokos, the mother of Christ, lift up our prayers unto your beloved Son, that he may forgive us our sins. Hail to the Holy Virgin, who has brought forth unto us the true light, Christ our God. Ask the Lord on our behalf that we have mercy on our souls and forgive us our sins. O Virgin Mary, the Holy Theotokos, the faithful advocate for all mankind, intercede on our behalf before Christ whom you bore that he may forgive us our sins. you to remember us, O oh, our faithful advocate, before our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may forgive us our sins. As David has said in the book of Psalms, the queen stood at your right hand, O king. For he has given us symbol of her in many high names, saying, Come out of your garden, O choicest aroma. We ask you to remember us, O oh, our faithful advocate, before our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may forgive us our sins. Michael is the first, Gabriel is the second, Raphael is the third, a symbol of the Trinity. Him for the 
the cherubim and the seraphim, the thrones, the minions and powers, the four incorporeal creatures carrying the throne of God. Who are asleep, holy immortal, bless your inheritance. May your mercy and peace be a fortress to your people. Holy, 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 O Lord of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory and honor. Intercede on our behalf, O angelic armies, and the heaven, heavens, that he may forgive us our sins. Our Lord Jesus Christ has chosen his apostles, Peter and Andrew, John and James, and the rest, Philip and Matthew, Bartholomew and Thomas. James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Canaanite, Thaddeus and Matthias, Paul, Mark, and Luke, and the rest of the disciples who followed our Savior, Matthias who was chosen in place of Judas, all of them and the rest followed the Master, went forth throughout the face of the Lord, and their words have reached the ends of the world. Pray to the Lord on our behalf, my lords and fathers, the apostles, and the seventy-two disciples, that he may forgive us our sins. O Lord, the apostle and the evangelist, the witness of the passion of the only begotten you have come and enlightened us through your gospel and taught us the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You brought us out of darkness into the true light, feeding us the bread of life that came down from heaven. All the tribes of the earth were blessed through you. And your words have reached the ends of the world. Pray to the Lord on our behalf, O Beholder of God, the Evangelist. Mark the Apostle, that he may forgive us our sins. Of Melchizedek, he received honor from our father Peter, the first of the apostles. Christ lifted his right hand on your head. He gave you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. As Paul the Apostle has said, likewise as Aaron, Christ is also. Pray to the Lord on our behalf of my father, the patriarch, our holy father of Atawadros, that he may forgive us our sins. Pray to the Lord on our behalf, our holy, righteous father, Yusuf, the bishop, that he may forgive us our sins. Watch over us from on high where you dwell, O Lady of us all, the ever virgin Theodore. Ask of him whom you have borne, our good Savior, to take away our troubles and grant us his peace.
We ask you to remember us, O our faithful advocate, before our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may forgive us our sins. We exalt you, the mother of the true light. We glorify you, O Saint of the Otokos, for you have brought forth unto us the Savior of the whole world. He came and saved our souls. Glory be to you, our Master, our King, Christ, the power of the apostles, the crown of the martyrs, the joy of the righteous, the firmness of the churches, the forgiveness of sins. We proclaim the Holy Trinity in one Godhead. We worship him, we glorify him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, bless us. Amen. We believe in one God, God the Father, the Pontiff Rotor, creator of heaven and earth and of all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten not created, of one essence with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, of the Virgin Mary, and became man. And he was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, suffered and was buried, and on the third day he rose from the dead, according to the scriptures, ascended into heaven. He sits at the right hand of his Father, and he is coming again in his glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. Yes, we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we confess one baptism for the remission of sins. For the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Amen. God have mercy upon us. Upon us, have compassion upon us. from us visit us with your salvation and forgive us our sins Amen, Lord have mercy Lord have mercy Lord have mercy let us pray. Stand up for prayer. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. Oh, after Lord Jesus Christ, our God, who said to his saintly honored disciples and holy apostles, Many prophets and righteous men have desired to see the things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear the things which you hear and have not heard them. But as for you, blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. May we be worthy to hear and to act according to your holy gospels, through the prayers of your sins. Pray for the Holy Gospel. Lord, have mercy. Remember also our Master, all those who have been in us to remember them in our supplications and prayers, which we offer up unto our God, those who have already fallen asleep, repose them, 
those who are sick, heal them. For you are the life of us all, the salvation of us all, the hope of us all, the healing of us all, and the resurrection of us all. A Psalm of David say, Alleluia. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hell? He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. Alleluia. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord of hosts. Bless, O Lord, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John the Evangelist and the pure disciple. Our Lord God, Savior and King of us all, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, to whom is glory forever. Amen. So Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. The noble man said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go your way, your son lives. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Your son lives. Then he inquired of them the hour when he got better. And they said to him yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said to him, Your son lives. And he himself believed, and his whole household. Oh, oh, oh. Glory be to God for ever. Let us worship our Savior. Good one and lover of mankind, for he had compassion on us and has come and saved us. Intercede on our behalf, O Lady of us all, the Theotokos, Mary, the mother of our Savior, that he may forgive us our sins. Pray to the Lord on our behalf, our Holy Father, the Patriarch, Pope of Atawadros, the Archpriest, that he may forgive us our sins. Pray to the Lord on our behalf, our holy and righteous Father of Yusuf, the bishop, that he may forgive us our sins. Blessed be the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the perfect Trinity. We worship him and glorify him. 
Let us pray. Stand up for prayer. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. Again, let us ask God the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. We ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind. Remember, O Lord, the peace of your one only holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Pray for the peace of the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Orthodox Church of God. Lord have mercy. From one end of the world to the other, remember, O Lord, our honored patriarch and father, the archpriest, Pope Abba to Andrus II, and his spiritual brother in the Patriarch of Antioch, Mar Ignatius Ephraim II, and the Patriarch of Eritrea, Abu Antonius I, and his partner in the Apostolic Liturgy, our Father, the Bishop of Ayusif. secure for us for many years and peaceful times. Remember, O Lord, the salvation of this your holy place and every place in every monastery of our Orthodox Fathers. Pray for the salvation of the world and of the city of ours and of all cities, districts, islands, and monasteries. Lord, have mercy. In every city, in every country, in the villages, and all their adornment, and save us all from famine, plague, earthquake, drowning, fire, captivity, bar barbarians, the sword of the stranger, and the rising up of heretics. Lord, have mercy. Graciously accord, O Lord, the air of heaven and the fruits of the earth this year to bless them. them, bring them to perfection and peace without harm, and forgive us our sins. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Raise them to their measure according to your grace. Give joy to the face of the earth. May its furrows be abundantly watered and its fruits be plentiful. Prepared for sowing and harvesting, manage our life as the infant. Bless the crown of the year with your goodness for the sake of the poor of your people, the widow, the orphan, the traveler, the stranger, and for the sake of all of us who entreat you and seek your holy name. For the eyes of everyone wait upon you, for you give them their food in due season. Deal with us according to your goodness, O you who give food to all flesh. Fill our hearts with joy and gladness that we too, having sufficiency in everything, always may abound in every good deed. Lord have mercy. Again, let us ask God the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, we ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind. Remember, O Lord, our assemblies, bless them. Pray for this holy church and for us, assemblies. Lord, have mercy. Grant that they may be to us without obstacle or hindrance, that we may hold them according to your holy and blessed will, Houses of prayers, houses of purity, houses of blessings. Grant them to us, O Lord, and to your servants who will come after us forever. 
the worship of idols, utterly uproot from the world, Satan and all his evil powers, trample and humiliate them under our feet speedily, the offenses and their instigators abolish, let the dissensions of corrupt heresy cease, the enemies of your holy church, O Lord, as at all times they also humiliate, strip their vanity, show them their weaknesses speedily, bring to not their envies, their intrigue, their madness, their wickedness, and their slanders which they commit against us. O Lord, bring them all to no avail, disperse their counsel, O God, who disperses the counsel of Ahitho. Fail. Lord have mercy. Arise, O Lord the God, let all your enemies be scattered, and let all who hate your holy name flee before your face. But let your people be in blessing, thousand of thousand, and ten thousand times ten thousand, doing your will. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of forever. Bow, bow your heads to the Lord. Let us attend in the fear of God. Amen. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. O Master, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, and Logos of God the Father, who has broken every bond of our sins through his life-giving sufferings, who breathed in the face of his holy disciples and saintly apostles, and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. You also now, our Master, through your holy apostles, have given grace to those who for a time labor in the priesthood in your holy church to forgive sins upon the earth and to bind and to lose if bond of iniquity. We ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind, for your servant, those who bow their heads before your holy glory. Dispense unto us your mercy. Lose every one of our iniquities, if we have committed any sin against you, no angry or unknown, strong of heart, or indeed or in word, or from faint heartedness. O Master, who knows the weakness of men, as a good man and lover of mankind, God grant us the forgiveness of our sins. Bless us, absolve us, and all your people. Fill us with your fear, straighten us unto your goodwill, for you are our God, and glory, honor, dominion, and worship are due to you together with the good Father and Holy Spirit. Now and forever, and on the age of all ages. Amen. In Lord have mercy, in Lord have mercy, in Lord have mercy. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. 
We will continue our Bible study tonight from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 22, starting from verse 47. And while he, the Lord Jesus, was still speaking, behold, a multitude, he was speaking in the Garden of Gethsemane, behold, a multitude, and he who was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near to Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? We see here actually how multitude, a crowd, came to arrest the Lord Jesus Christ. This crowd was from Judas, accompanied by some of the chief priests and also the temple guards, as well as Roman soldiers led by an officer. So Judas, chief priests, temple guards, Roman soldiers led by an officer. And they sent actually a large number which shows us that the religious leaders clearly regarded this as a dangerous operation to be done without risk of right or failure. And when uh, St. Luke mentioned the name of Judas, he said one of the 12, one of the disciples of Christ, whom he chosen, whom he called, whom he ordained, but he was unfaithful to his master. And Judas went before them to lead them to the place and to show them the man, Jesus, they wanted. And definitely nothing can be a greater grief to the Lord Jesus than to be betrayed by those who profess to be his followers and say that they love him. This actually shows us every time we sin against the Lord, it is a sin uh, of betrayal, and this causes grief and sorrow in the heart of the Master. And when we compare the reaction of the Lord Jesus Christ to the reaction of the disciples at the time of arrest, we can see how the Lord, his reaction was totally different than the rest of the disciples. At the Garden of Gethsemane, the Lord prayed. They slept, although the Lord told them, watch and pray, lest we enter into temptation, but they slept. He prayed, and his prayer was answered when the Father sent an angel to strengthen the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why when the hour of mortal danger struck, the Lord was in the greatest call. But the disciples were afraid, and they ran away. So nothing here disturbed his serenity. He was peaceful. And with calm majesty, he advanced to meet the traitor, to meet Judas. As Judas guided the enemies, the soldiers, and the temple guards to arrest Jesus, he led them toward the Lord Jesus Christ. And here we see how the Lord actually advanced to meet uh, Judas and all the soldiers without any fear. Uh, definitely, it was a strange and a startling detail for the evangelists when they wrote how one of the twelve, one of those whom were chosen by the Lord Jesus Christ, had been the betrayer. And Judas came, he agreed with the soldiers that the sign 
for the signal will be a kiss. So this was the sign agreed upon between Judas and the chief priests. They know it was night, and Gethsemane was shaded with olive trees. That's why an obvious sign is necessary to indicate to the guard which one of the 12, Jesus and 11, is the master whom they want to seize. But we know from the Gospel of St. John that this sign was unnecessary. In the Gospel of St. John, the Lord actually went to the guards and asked them, whom do you want? And they told him, Jesus of Nazareth. And he told him, I am he. So he introduced himself. And three times he told them, I am he. And they were afraid and went backward and fell down. So this signal was unnecessary. And the Lord Jesus Christ knew the irony of being betrayed with a warm greeting. How you are coming to give me a kiss and you are using this kiss which is a sign of love, you are using as a sign of uh, betrayal. That's why in sincere liturgy, before the deacon says, greet one another with a holy kiss, uh, Abuna in the reconciliation prayer define two important characteristics of the holy kiss. Number one, not with a lustful desire. And number two, not with ungenuine heart or a heart of a betrayer. These are two important characteristics of the holy kiss. No lustful desire and not with a heart of a traitor. Uh, so the Lord asked him, as if he asked him, are you so dead to all feelings that you can kiss and betray? And here we notice that the Lord called him by his name, Judas. As if the Lord is saying, what Judas, my apostle, my friend, in whom I trusted, he made him the treasurer, and with whom I trusted all my worldly affair. Are you coming to betray me with a kiss? Uh, and with Judas, we can see the Jewish leaders carried the weapons of hatred in their hearts. The soldiers carried the swords, and Judas came forward with a kiss from his lips that was more bitter to the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ than all other weapons. This kiss actually grieved the heart of the Lord more than all the other weapons. Verse 49, when those around him the 11, so what was going to happen? They said to him, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. So the disciples, anticipating the action of the representatives of the authority, ask direction from the Lord, should we strike with the sword? And one of them, Peter, not waiting for an answer, strikes out. In the Gospel of St. John, we know that it was Peter who cut off the ear of the servant of the high priest, and the name of the servant, Malchus, as we read in John 18, verse 10. When Peter used the power of the sword, he could only cut off ears. But when he used the power 
of the word of God, the sword of the spirit, like on the day of Pentecost, he was able to pierce the hearts of 3,000 persons who converted to uh, Christianity. And here we can see how the Lord, even during time of, of his arrest, he is present to clean up the mess that his disciples left behind. He healed the damage done by Peter. Verse 51, but Jesus answered and said, permit even this. And he touched his ear and healed him. What does this mean, permit even this? The exact meaning of these words has been much debated. Uh, some commentators said maybe the Lord was speaking to the company of armed men and pleading with the high priest to permit Malchus to come to him or permit Jesus to go to this servant in order to heal it. So he told them, permit even this. Give me this opportunity to show kindness and love to this servant who came to arrest me. Allow this to happen. So maybe he was speaking to the high priests. Other commentators said, no. He was speaking to the disciples and to Peter. Permit, let them arrest me. Permit even this. Allow them to arrest me. So Peter, stop your hand. Don't proceed any further. Put uh, your sword back in its grab. It is the time for me to be arrested and to go to the cross. And we can see here that even throughout the arrest sequence, the Lord was in control of the events. He was in control. He said to the uh, guards, I am he. He was not afraid. And he was controlling his disciples who wanted to protect him. Verse 52, then Jesus said to the chief priests, captains of the temple, and the elders who had come to him, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you daily in the temple, you did not try to seize me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. So after the Lord had performed this miracle and had quieted them up and restrained them from falling upon the apostles, as he said to them, let them go about the apostles, because if they attack the apostles, apostles will weak people. Maybe they would cut them into pieces. Uh, now he's addressing the chief priests. And we can see in the front we have Judas, behind him the soldiers and the temple guards, and standing at a distance were the chief priests. They want to be at distance from the conflict. But after the guards and the soldiers arrested the Lord Jesus Christ, now they felt safe to draw near to the Lord Jesus Christ. So it is a reproach to them for their cowardice and secrecy to stand behind. And here the Lord was addressing the high priests and the elders of the people. And he told them, if I had really done something wrong, how is it you did not arrest me in the temple? That's actually your authority. Why you are waiting to come and to arrest me in the darkness, in this garden, away from everybody? But it is your hour and the power of darkness. So uh, 
Jesus now is giving explanation why he allowed himself to be taken by the chief priest and the captain of the temple. Why? Why he did not put a fight? Why he did not ask the father to send the legend of angels? Because it is now the time determined by God from before the ages. It is the time, it is the fullness of time for the Lord Jesus Christ to go to the cross. It's the time to deliver himself to their hands that they do with him what they want. So the Lord actually was not arrested against his own will, but he was arrested by his authority, by his determination, in the time that he had appointed before the foundation of the world. And the physical darkness, they arrested him at night, uh, maybe around midnight. This time actually was like a symbol of the moral darkness. The dark of night is fitting for the power of darkness. This power of darkness controlled the souls and the hearts of his adversary. They are the children of darkness as opposed to the Christian who are the children of the light, because the light is the Lord Jesus Christ. Sincere of Alexandria said, you have one hour against me. That is a very short and limited time between the precious cross and the resurrection from the dead. This is your time, this is your hour, and the power of darkness. Verse 54, having arrested him, they led him and brought him into the high priest's house. But Peter followed at a distance. The Lord actually was tried six trial at that night. Three religious trials and three civil trials. The first one before Anas, the high priest. The second one before Qiyafa. The third one before the Sanhedrin. These are the three religious trials. Then the three civil, the first one before Pilate. Then Pilate sent him to Herod when he knew the Jesus from Galilee. Then Herod sent him back to Pilate. So he, he was tried six times three religious and three uh, civil. So after they arrested him, they let him, uh, they bound him and let him out of the garden. And see here, despite of the miracle he just performed right now, and the kindness and the humanity that he had shown in healing, the ear of the servant who came to arrest him, and in spite, in spite of his moving words to the chief priests, but they were heartless. They arrested him and now taking him to be tried at the house of the high priest. But what happened arresting him and taking him to the house of high priest confirmed his words, this is your hour and the power of darkness. It is your time and the power was given to you. The, you are the agents of Satan. You are a, a, acting against me. Uh, before Jesus went to the house of Qiyafa, the official high priest, he was led to the home of Anas. Anas was the ex-high priest. And Anas actually was the power behind the throne as if he was actually the actual high priest. Uh, the official one was Qiyafa, and Qiyafa was the son-in-law to Anas. So uh, Qiyafa was the legal high priest, uh, but uh, the official high priest, but Anas actually was overthrown by the Roman power. Uh, 
But unless, although prevented by the Roman government from being the high priest, but all the people perceived Anas as the rightful possessor of dignity. He is the actual high priest. And he exercised the chief authority in the Jewish council. So before the government, it was Qiyafa. But before the people, it was Anas. That's why he took, they took him first to Anas, then to Qiyafa. Uh, And it seems that both Anas and Qiyafas lived together or occupied together the high priest palace. So as I told you, there were three trials of our Lord by the Jews. That is the religious trials other than the civil. The first one before Anas, second one before Qiyafas, and the third one before the entire uh, Sanhedrin. It was early in the morning, at the dawn. Verse 55, now we saw how Peter followed at a distance. Now when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. So. Uh, Peter was concerned for the Lord Jesus Christ and wanted to know what would happen to him. Uh, no doubt there was in the heart of Peter this impulsive, loving man. There was sorrowful anxiety and deep sorrow for the fate of his uh, beloved master. Yet he did not have the courage to associate the Lord Jesus Christ clearly when they arrested him. That's why he followed at distance. And this distance actually make it more difficult for Peter to admit his association with the Lord Jesus Christ when he was questioned whether he is one of the followers or not. So uh, after the arrest at Gethsemane, all the 11 ran away. But John and Peter, both of them, once they saved themselves from the hands of the armed band, so, the, and after they recovered from the first panic, they wanted to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and his guards to the city to see what would happen to him. So Peter entered and sat among the servant as one of them. And it was a cold night, so now find the warmth around their fire and hoping to blend in so he may knew what is going to happen to the Lord Jesus Christ. So Peter put himself among the servants of those who arrested and persecuted the Lord. Verse 56, and a certain servant girl seeing him as he sat by the fire, looked intently at him and said, this man was also with him. But he denied him saying, woman, I do not know him. And after a little while, another saw him and said, you also are of them. But Peter said, man, I am not. Then after about an hour had passed, Another confidently affirmed, saying, surely this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I do not know what you are saying. Immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. So now we come to the denial of Peter three times. First time, a certain servant girl looking upon him and taking notice of him, observed his expression and gesture. Um, as he sat by the fire, she recognized him as one of the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. St. Luke told us the sad story of Peter's denial without interruption 
but he said it as gentle as he can. He omitted the cursing and swearing. Matthew mentioned that Peter cursed and swore, but Luke, with a kind heart, he did not want to expose Peter. So he mentioned gently the denial of Peter. We know that Peter denied three times, but also he denied in three specific ways. Not only three times, but three specific ways. First, he denied knowing Jesus. When he said to the girl, woman, I do not know him. So he denied knowing him. Then he denied being a follower of Jesus. When he said to the man, man, I am not, I'm not a follower of Jesus. So he doesn't know him and he's not a follower of Jesus. Finally, he denied that even he is from Galilee. When he said he is a Galilean, he said, man, I do not know what you are saying. So even he denied that he is from Galilee. When this uh, uh, female servant was positive assertion confronted Peter and not knowing how to clear himself, he denied that Jesus is his own master and he is one of his disciples. Peter when the Lord told him, this night you will deny me three times, Peter said, no, I am ready to go with you, to be arrested with you, to go with you to the prison, even to die with you. So Peter, who said that he would die with the Lord, now he is denying him because he was frightened at this servant meat. And he denied him from the first attack upon him. And then when the second, another man came uh, and accused Peter that he is a follower of Jesus, Peter denied for the second time. And as I told you, Matthew said that the last denial of Peter began, Peter began to curse and swear. Why he cursed and swore? trying to convince them that he is not one of his followers, hoping that it would help to distance himself from the association with the Lord. And we can see here Peter was challenged by servants of both genders, a female and two men. The second man points out that he is a Galilean, maybe by his accent or his manner of dress or both. Uh, and usually when you lie once, you will continue to lie to cover the first lie. So Peter lied to this servant girl. Now he continued to lie to the second man and to the third one. Then the rooster crowed. Uh, Mark, the only one mentioned the two crowing of the rooster. Because the Lord told him, you will deny me, the rooster will crow twice, and you will deny me three times. Mark is the only one who mentioned the two crowing of the rooster. Uh, the rooster is in the hand of God. And God used the rooster as an instrument to uh, awake Peter, the fallen apostle as he used the whale to awaken Jonah. And God actually in control of the nature. So he used the nature, uh, wind, storm, animals, uh, birds, to send us message. So God does not only speak to us through the Bible, through the fathers in the church, uh, through godly friends, but he can speak to us even through the nature as he spoke to Peter through the rooster. Verse 61, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, 
before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So Peter went out and wept bitterly. And usually, I ask myself this question, how Peter knew that the Lord looked at him? If I'm looking at you right now, and you are not looking at me, you will not know that I looked at you. So I want you to imagine here, while Peter was denying the Lord, he was looking at the Lord. Maybe he was looking, feeling guilty that out of his weakness, he's denying the Lord. Or maybe he's denying looking at the Lord, whether the Lord is seeing him or not. But what I'm trying to tell you, even in the time of weakness, if you keep your eye on the Lord, this actually will save you. Because keeping your eye on the Lord will actually move the, the feeling of repentance as happened with Peter. When his eye got in contact with the eyes of the Lord, he went outside and wept bitterly. Uh, so this moment when the Lord looked at Peter, it was a turning point in Peter's life. And maybe this is the most touching incident uh, mentioned only by St. Luke. When Jesus looked at Peter, he was not angry. His look was full of uh, tenderness, uh, pity. He was not angry, but sorrowful. But this actually made Peter to return to his honorable self. Uh, as if the Lord is saying to Peter, Peter, you do not know me? Is it true that you do not know me? We just mentioned that the Lord looked at the chief priests and told them, I was with you every day in the temple and you did not arrest me. His words did not move anything in their heart, had no impression on them. But on Peter, it had impression. And Peter went outside and wept bitterly. You know why? Because there is big difference between a sin of weakness and a sin of betrayal. Judas and the chief priests, their sin is the sin of betrayal. But Peter's sin was sin of weakness. Then Peter remembered, but it was too late. He already sinned, he already denied. But was immediately convicted of his sin. Not only of his denial, but also of his pride that he said to the Lord, if all denied you, I will not deny you. This was a prideful statement from Peter. So his reaction at this moment, he wept bitterly, but without losing hope. He wept bitterly, but he remembered also the words of the Lord when he told him, Satan, ask it to sift you, but I prayed for you that your faith will not fail. So because of the prayer of the Lord, because of the strength that he got from the Lord, that's why his faith did not fail. Yes, Peter fell, but had not fallen away like Judas. Verse 63, now the men who held Jesus mocked him and beat him. And having blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and asked him, saying, prophesy, who is the one who struck you? And many other things they blasphemously spoke against him. There are many things that happened at that night, but St. Luke did not record them. Uh, as I told you, he was tried at the house of Annas and house of Qiyasa, and the details of the trial, St. Luke did not mention. Uh, 
but actually you can read this in detail in Matthew chapter 26. So what St. Uh, Luke missed to record the false witnesses who could not agree, the charge by two witnesses against the Lord Jesus Christ that he would destroy the temple and within three days he will rebuild it, the high priest ordering Jesus under oath before God to say if he was the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one, the son of God, and the high priest tearing his robe as he condemned Jesus of blasphemy after Jesus quoted from Daniel 7.13 and Psalm 110 verse 1. So Luke did not mention any of these things that were mentioned by the other evangelists. But he recorded for us what happened immediately after the trial at the house of high priest, Qiyafa and Anas, that Jesus was mocked and beaten by religious authorities. They actually blinded, uh, blindfolded him so being blinded, Jesus endured these slaps and punches in, his, uh, in pain. Matthew and Mark added that they spat in his face. Of course, if the Lord wanted to draw to his rightful resources of divine power because he is God, he would answer who exactly struck him. But in all this, Jesus refused to draw to the resources of his divine power and authority. And the Jews in this terrible scene were unconsciously working out a literal fulfillment of Isaiah's picture of the righteous sufferer, as you read it in Isaiah 1, verse 6, and Isaiah 53, from verses 3 to 7. So without realizing, they were fulfilling what Isaiah prophesied about is the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's important to see how the Lord replied to their hatred by love. Don't repay evil with evil. Love your enemies. So it was important so that those who are abused and humiliated can find a refuge in a God who knows what they experience. God knows exactly what those who are humiliated and abused, what they experience. And St. Luke actually, you know the Lord Jesus Christ was accused of blasphemy when he said, I am the son of God. But Luke, now he's explaining to us who indeed blasphemed. Is it the Lord Jesus Christ or these uh, people? And many other things they blasphemously spoke against him. So here this expression is remarkable. They charged the Lord Jesus with blasphemy because he said he was the son of God. But now St. Luke fixes that charge on them because Jesus indeed he is the son of God. So by spitting on him, hitting him, uh, uh, humiliating him, actually they blasphemed. Verse 66, as I told you, Jesus was tried three times, religious trial, and Nas Qiyafa. Now this is the third trial, verse 66. As soon as it was day, the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, came together and led him into their council, saying, if you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, if I tell you, you will by no means believe. And if I also ask you, you will by no means answer me or let me go. But I will answer. Hereafter, the Son of Man will sit on the right hand of the power of God. Son of Man was used by Daniel about the Messiah. And sitting at the right hand uh, of God, that's what Saint, um, David said in Psalm 110, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. 
So he told them, I am the Messiah. You want to know the answer? I am the Messiah. But you will not believe me. And if I ask you anything, you will not answer. And you will not let me go. So according to St. Luke, the Sanhedrin now first comes together after daybreak. And Jesus is let in for trial. St. Luke did not tell us where they assembled uh, in the house of the high priest or somewhere else. But they asked him a question. If you are the Christ, tell us. And the answer to this question is reported only by St. Luke. Uh, so they are asking him, are you the Messiah? Because Christ and Messiah are synonymous. Christ means the chrismated one, the anointed one. Messiah, you know, Hebrew and Arabic are closed. Messiah, Al-Mamsuh, Al-Masih. So Messiah and Christ is the same word. Uh, and our Lord actually told them several times that he is the Messiah, as we read in John chapter 8, verse 58, in John chapter 10, verse 30, when he said, I and the Father are one. But they did not believe. So as if the Lord telling them, you have seen my life, you have heard my words, you have seen my works, and you do not believe. Why should I say it again to you? Are you going to believe? They pretended to have open mind, and they are asking a sincere question. But this was like a trap. They asked him this question, so if he answered, I am the Messiah, they will say, he blasphemed, the sentence is death. So it was deception. Uh, so the words were according an indirect protest against their claim to question him. What Jesus is saying is that it is useless to discuss this point with them because they were not really open to the truth. You, you will not believe me. Uh, they had already, actually they had already before meeting or trying him, determined his fate. He wanted him to be killed. So they could care less about the truth, whether he is a Messiah or not. They want to kill him. And he told them, if I answer you, if I ask you a question, you will by no means answer. You know, the Lord asked him, them two questions before. One time when he told them the baptism of Jonah, is it from heaven or from earth? And they told him, we don't know. And they asked him another question about Psalm 110. He told them, we know that the Messiah is the son of David. How David calls him his Lord when he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. And they did not answer. So the Lord asked them these questions about the sonship of the Messiah, how he is the son of David and the Lord of David, and they did not answer. So they asked him in unlawful spirit and also in unlawful manner. So the Lord told him, if I tell you the truth, you will not believe me. If I ask you a question about the Messiah, you will not answer me. And you will, let, you will not let me go. Why should I answer? Uh, as if you want to tell them, and instead of asking me who I claim to be, because this is not a claim, it is the truth. You should ask who I am. I am the Messiah. I'm indeed the Son of God. But the Lord at the end decided to put an end to this weary and useless trial. 
Do you want me to tell you I'm a Messiah to arrest me? Here it is. So he supplied his judges with the evidence they were seeking to obtain from him. And he responded by referring to two Old Testament passages. The first in Daniel chapter 7, verse 13 and 14, in which actually the divine Messiah is called the son of a man. Looking like a son of a man, like a human, this was in reference to his incarnation, who came on the clouds of heaven to God the Father to receive power and dominion over all nations. You can read this in Daniel chapter 7. So when he told him, from now on you see the Son of Man, they know this is about the Messiah according to Daniel. Sit on the right hand of God, that is Psalm 110. Uh, when actually the Lord asked them, how David about the Messiah saying, he is his Lord, although we know the Messiah is the son of David. And since the Lord has already told that David was referring not to his son, but the Messiah who is greater, because he called him Lord, he's obviously using this psalm to identify himself as the Messiah. So he used Daniel and Psalm 110 to tell them the answer you are looking for, I am the Messiah. Go ahead and sentence me to death. Both passages from Daniel and the book of Psalms refer to the role of the Lord Jesus Christ in the kingdom of God after his resurrection and ascension. That's why he told them hereafter, which means the second or the next time you will see me when I come on the cloud to judge the world, in my second coming, you will see me seated at the right hand of the Father. And you will see me as the Son of Man. So, I am the Messiah. Verse 70, then they all said, are you then the son of God? So he said to them, you rightly say that I am. When Moses asked God in the book of, of Judas, what's your name? The Lord God said to Moses, I am who I am. So I am ego imi, mean refer to God. So when the Lord said, I am, everybody understood that he is saying, I am God. I am the Messiah. Uh, many people, non-Christian nowadays claim that Jesus never ever referred to himself that he is God. No, because the ignorant of this term, I am. I am in Greek, ego imi. Ego imi means I am God. And no one dared to use this term except Jesus Christ. That's why when they arrested him and they told him, we need Jesus of Nazareth, and he told him, I am ego imi. Actually, they went backward and fell. They were scared to be in front of uh, God. So when the Lord said, I am, he actually saying, I am God. So indeed the Lord said, I am God, and this got him crucified. Last verse in, in the chapter 22, verse 71. And they said, what further testimony do we need? He gave him what they were looking for. Blasphemy, according to them. What further testimony do we need? For we have heard it ourselves from his own mouth. So when Jesus answered, I am, they felt 
they had him and can charge him of blasphemy, which carried the penalty of death. For we have heard ourselves from his own mouth. We have heard him profess himself the son of God. He is therefore guilty of blasphemy, and they must proceed against and condemn him to this. But according to the Roman government, they cannot kill anyone. So they have to take him to the govern to the Roman governor, in order to uh, execute him. That's why they proceeded as far as they could. He must now be brought before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, as the Jews had no power to put him to death. The Roman government took this power from the Jews. That's why they had to go to Pilate. And then when he went to Pilate, the other three trials, civil trials, started. This concludes chapter 22 from the Gospel of St. Luke. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto the ages of the ages. Amen. We proclaim and say, O our Lord Jesus Christ, bless the air of heaven. May your mercy and peace be a fortress unto your people. Save us and have mercy on us. You have received the grace of Moses, the priesthood of Melchizedek. The old age of Jacob, the long life of Methuselah, the excellent understanding of David, the wisdom of Solomon, and the spirit, the paraclete, who came upon the apostles. May the Lord preserve the life and rising of our honored Father, the Archpriest Pope of Atawadros, and our Father, the Bishop of Ayusim. May the God of heaven confirm them on their thrones for many years and peaceful times. May he subdue all of their enemies under their feet speedily. Pray to Christ on our behalf that he may forgive us our sins in peace according to his great mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, bless us, amen. Bless me, bless me. Lo, the Matanya, forgive me, say the blessing. Christ our God. Amen, so be. O King of Peace, grant us your peace, establish us your peace, forgive us our sins, for yours is the power, glory, blessing, and mercy forever. Amen. O Lord, make us worthy to pray thankfully, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Now, love of God the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, communion and gift of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Your spirit. You guys can come and uh, receive the blessing from His Grace, Bishop Yusuf. Just a reminder that matins will begin at 8.30 tomorrow morning.